Uh, obesity has been uh, always thought to be related to an imbalance between energy intake and expenditure and there was always this policy of blaming the victim for eating too much or doing very less of exercise. But recent research have proved that it's a metabolic derangement, a hormonal imbalance cascade which is responsible for obesity. There is a lot of say about genetic polymorphism. There is a lot of environmental trigger responsible and obviously the behavioral factor which are responsible. We also know that obesity causes uh, a lot of things, uh, uh, metabolic problems like sex hormone imbalance, a metabolic syndrome, a mechanical stress leading to sleep apnea, osteoarthritis, low back pain and shortness of breath and obviously cardiovascular diseases. In past, there was a different perception of society about obesity because obesity was seen as a weakness or a failure of an individual and as I mentioned, uh, the card of blaming the victim always played the role. But uh, diet and exercise were also the prescribed treatment and weight loss surgery was viewed as a dangerous and extreme measure. But now, things have changed. In fact, a lot of societies have accepted bariatric and metabolic surgeries as a treatment option for diabetes and obesity, including the American societies. Uh, the risk factors have uh, drastically came down with advanced laparoscopic surgery and surgery has gained a lot of acceptance as a part of treatment modality. Uh, these are the few facts from WHO. The obesity has tripled since 1975. In 2016, 1.9 billion adults were overweight and 650 million were obese. Most of the world population live in countries where overweight and obesity kills more people than underweight. Childhood obesity is increasing rampantly and there is a lot of attention being paid towards the childhood obesity nowadays. Uh, we also know that uh, obesity has been categorized depending on the BMI. According to me, only BMI is a very subjective criteria. We should also look into the metabolic factors. Somebody who is just grade 1 obese but has a lot of comorbidities has a more troublesome life than compared to another person who has grade 4 obesity but does not have metabolic problems. Let's go back to the natural history of obesity leading to type 2 diabetes. We have eminent panelists here with us, um, the, the leading endocrinologist. They will agree with me that obesity eventually leads to diabetes because the, the onset is very slow and progressive and when we look at the natural history of type 2 diabetes, uh, eventually you have hyperinsulinemia which is responsible for more obesity and gradually there is a beta cell failure and then eventually leading to pancreatic burnout and causing a very severe form of diabetes. So, I have two scenarios which are real life scenarios which we see in our day to day practice. A 19 year old girl has a weight of 108 kg with a BMI of 38. Uh, she is a known case of polycystic ovary. She has to take withdrawal pills. She is hypothyroid and she when she came to us we investigated upon her. She was found to have fatty liver with uh, deranged liver function test. Her ultrasound also shows polycystic ovary. Her Surprisingly, uh, she found to be diabetic with a very bad HbA1c and cortisol was normal. We asked her to take further few tests. We took an opinion from our endocrinologist and she was posted for bariatric surgery. We did a sleeve gastrectomy upon her and now she is doing very well. The other case is a 45 year old male uh, with a weight of 116 kg with a BMI of 42. He had a right ACL repair. He is already hypertensive and found to have another fatty liver disease and had an unstable right knee because of ACL tear and uh, this gentleman was also posted for bariatric surgery. He lost weight and then eventually he did not require any further treatment for his right knee uh, uh, instability because obviously once the weight reduced the joint was more stable. So, these are just two examples to highlight how bariatric surgery can help somebody in gaining back, back uh, the way uh, the uh, coming back to their natural life, the healthy life.
and it has been proved that uh, there is 77 percent excess weight loss with bariatric surgery there is 85 percent resolution of diabetes osa hypertension and metabolic syndrome so now right now it has been accepted as a life-saving surgery now bariatric surgery indication this is a very important slide because uh, there is a lot of myth and ambiguity among even among physicians they don't know when to uh, subject a patient when to refer a patient for bariatric surgery so these are the guidelines for asian population the guidelines are different for western population so anybody who has age of 18 to 65 and if below 18 years like the one case which i presented we took an opinion of an pediatrician also uh, if the bmi is more than 35 with or without comorbidities if the bmi is more than 32 with comorbidities if somebody's bmi is more than 30 with uh, uh, symptoms of metabolic syndrome and recently uh, the metabolic surgery or diabetes surgery is getting a lot of popularity anybody who is diabetic with uncontrolled diabetes and has an BMI of more than 27.5 can take advantage of this metabolic surgery. Now, I do get a lot of um, um, questions, physician, how does bariatric surgery help and what is the long term outcome, how a patient should be handled post bariatric surgery. So, bariatric surgery alone can't do miracles. Uh, it has to be followed by a, a lifestyle modification, diet, exercise and behavior modification which are the key to success after surgery and also there is a role of multidisciplinary team when i say multidisciplinary i mean endocrinologist i mean hepatologist i mean anesthesiologist i mean a fitness expert i mean a bariatric physician i mean a reconstructive surgery specialist so it's a team effort which brings a uh, fruitful results after bariatric surgery so when we want to classify Bariatric surgery, it is basically uh, divided into restrictive procedure, maladaptive procedure and a combination of these two procedures. When we talk about restrictive procedure, the sleeve gastrectomy, most of you must be aware about it. Uh, this is the most common procedure done worldwide right, right now and in which we resect uh, the greater curvature and approximately 70 percent of stomach. The ghrelin hormone comes down. Uh, drastically the person's satiety is uh, very much improved and uh, the outcome can be seen very immediately within one or two months and patient gradually loses weight over a span of one year. The other procedure which is also known as the gold standard procedure is laparoscopic ruin by gastric bypass. It is a technically demanding procedure and it is also done by laparoscopy in which we make a small gastric pouch we bring along a small intestine and then we create a biliopancreatic limb and an elementary limb. So, food goes from this gastric pouch to the elementary limb and the pancreatic juice and the bile comes through the biliopancreatic limb and mix with the food. Usually, we bypass 100 and 100 centimeter and the results are fantastic with uh, this procedure except for a few patients who uh, see malnutrition and nutritional deficiencies which has to be handled um, in a very correct way or else it can lead to anemia and other problems. The other procedure known as mini gastric bypass or one anastomosis gastric bypass gaining a lot of popularity in Indian subcontinent though this procedure is not approved in uh, America it is not approved under insurance but this procedure has gained a lot of popularity and there are few controversies attached with this procedure but uh, this procedure has gained a lot of popularity and the results are fantastic with this procedure. Now few words about metabolic surgery for diabetes um, I'm, I know that a lot of you must be interested about diabetes whether diabetes can be tackled with this procedure yes we do have a very advanced procedure which is also known as metabolic surgery. Uh, the procedure name is loop duodenal jejunal bypass with sleeve gastrectomy. There is another procedure which is called sleeve gastrectomy with island interposition. The diagram looks very complicated and the surgery is also very challenging and demanding and, and it is done by very few centers in India and we are proud to say that we are one of the center doing this surgery and we have seen wonderful results in our patient. Lot of our patients who were on very high doses of insulin their insulin requirement came down some of them are off insulin 
the basic purpose is to delay the progress of microangiopathy and the and delay the complication end stage uh, problems uh, associated with diabetes now a very important question which comes to uh, you know everybody's mind whenever i attend some meetings this is a very common question asked by physician and surgeons how safe is bariatric surgery nowadays so the answer is in life we always calculate risk and benefit so we look at the risk involved then we look at the benefit side any surgery has some risk but this risk is not because of bariatric surgery or metabolic surgery this risk is involved because of the comorbidities which these patients already have like hypertension obstructive sleep apnea diabetes and other related issues but when we look at the brighter side the benefit which patient can gain out of surgery uh, in a long term basis definitely i would say that the benefits are more than the risk and when compared to the risk uh, of living with obesity including complications like diabetes uh, sleep apnea fatty liver and hypertension the increased likelihood of premature death with recent technological advancements and a team effort the risk of laparoscopic bariatric surgery is minimal with uh, our center now a very important point what are the key uh, to success of this bariatric surgery the follow up is of utmost importance to avoid nutritional deficiencies uh, we see there are a lot of which are booming up claiming to do uh, bariatric surgery but one has to understand bariatric surgery is not like a gallbladder surgery or an appendix surgery where a surgeon operates the patient and then there is no communication beyond that in bariatric surgery we still have follow up of our 5 years or 6 years back the patients we have operated because uh, tendency of weight regain after 5 to 6 years in few of the patient i'm not saying 100% but few patients might regain weight so we try to avoid the chances of weight regain in these patients because after few years everybody as a human has a tendency to take things for granted so this is more like a confession follow up in which we try to counsel and reconsult patients and this is how we try to uh, give a good name to this surgery because um, we all know that the bariatric surgery has lot of myths uh, in the society lot of physicians do have a lot of uh, doubts about the you know uh, efficiency of this procedure the weight we can as i have already mentioned is a concern issue and it could be because of unrealistic by the treating surgeon saying that okay you get the surgery done and you can eat whatever you want to eat whatever you want to do and uh, patient also wants to hear the same thing that okay doctor i do this surgery but i'm not going to change myself so honestly speaking uh, behavior modification and lifestyle modification are the most important thing after bariatric surgery surgery does a 50% job and the 50% job is done post surgery when patient tries to change and modify his lifestyle uh, adhik jankari ke liye aap uh, meri book uh, beyond weight loss surgery ko pad sakte hain ye book uh, amazon flipkart aur notion press ke online portal par uh, available hai